everybody, we're back. This is Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org, and this is Silicon Angles The Cube, where we extract the signal from the noise, we bring you the best guests that we can find, we drop into shows, and we bring you folks that really know their domains. Uh, I'm here with Jeff Frick, uh, my co-host today. To Jeff, we've been going all day. It's a great event. We're here at Moscone, the AWS Summit, and we're here with Misha Govstein, who's with Alert Logic. We're going to go deep on security. Jeff, we've heard a lot about from Andy Jassy this morning and others at Amazon how security is a top priority for Amazon. Uh, it's something that they see as a differentiator. Uh, it's, it's a hot topic. And so we're going to go deep with, uh, with Misha. First of all, Misha, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, Adam. Long time listener, first time follower. <laughs> <There> <laughs> Great to have you on. <laughs> so, I always wanted to say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't call sports radio, so it's your chance to do it, right? It's a, it's a much so, shorter hold time here. <laughs> so you uh, were telling me off camera over at the booth uh, that, well, a couple things, that, that you know, you, you guys are growing like crazy. So the, the awareness of cloud and the importance of security is exploding. Your company is exploding, Amazon's exploding. It's just a, a, a major wave, a big tsunami. Talk about, um, let's start with Alert Logic. Who are you guys, what do you do, What's your, what are you doing at a, a, the AWS Summit? And we'll get into it. Yeah, you know, we've been around for a long time. We've been around for about 10 years and uh, started the company uh, 10 years ago as a software as a service business long before software as a service or cloud was really coined as terms. So for the first five years of our life, being a multi-tenant and really being a hosted security product was kind of a hindrance. Nobody really enjoyed buying security uh, in that model. And when cloud really became a uh, driving force behind the IT industry, really started gaining momentum, thanks, that's when things really changed for us. We always grew reasonably well, but things really took off there. And we've been growing. 40 to 50% a year of a So security as a service is your is your game, but but what does that mean? Because there's so many, security is so co such a complex topic, there's so many layers of the value chain. Where do you guys fit? Yeah, so there's several layers of security that we offer, and the, so what we're focused on is cloud-enabled infrastructure. So any environment that's being transitioned from traditional enterprise to cloud delivery model, even something as simple as virtualization, that's a very first step towards cloud computing long term, uh, we, we provide security layers for, uh, for networks, applications, and systems in that stack. So if somebody wants to do compliance or protection or defense, we offer solutions for all of the above. So there's a suite of services that we offer. Intrusion detection is one of them, vulnerability assessment is another, log management, uh, and, and, uh, and, 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 and administration, right? So we have both software technologies that deliver those and 24 by 7 services. So you started 10 years ago and virtualization, you know, really hadn't taken hold in a, in a huge way at that point in time. So let's go back a little bit and, and help people understand sort of the complexities that virtualization itself brought in, just for our purpose, because you know, I always use the analogy, you, you, you have a castle, you build a moat, you protect the queen, queen wants to leave her castle, you know, <laughs> things get, get confusing. And in, in virtualization, sort of, it's an abstraction layer. You don't know what's connected to what, things are constantly changing. Talk about how you guys addressed that challenge and then we'll come into the sure. sort of modern cloud era. Well, one of the things that really helped us is that we've been, we've been multi-tenant ever since inception. So the so very first customer we had was a multi-tenant customer. We've always had all of our customers in a single instance of our software. That helped us tremendously to be able to go and work with customers that are virtualizing themselves. But honestly, virtualization is the easiest thing to deal with for any vendor. If you look at the security industry, they've had a very easy time adopting themselves to virtualized models, right? Everybody's got a service that works in VMware, right? But cloud computing is much more complex than that, right? And, and so beyond virtualization, when you start to, to have elastic workloads, right? When you start to have networks that change every minute and every day, that's when things get really complicated. Things that have to get reconfigured dynamically, that, that's where the most of the complexity comes in. And we've really uh, spent a lot of time on architecting that from the ground up for elastic environments. So over the last couple of years, even our software as a service model had to change to adapt itself to cloud computing. So at this point, we're 100% uh, API driven, we can support elasticity fully. So if somebody wants to use us on Amazon and Autoscale, we're one of the first few security companies that can do Yeah, so, um, Talk as well about how security's evolved. I mean, you know, 10 years ago it was starting to get this way, but if you go back even a little further, the, the bad guys were sort of going in, malware, making a lot of noise, ha, 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 I got a virus, blah, blah, blah. Now they're very secretive, right? They get in there. I, I read a stat the other day that the average uh, detection time after an intrusion is over 400 days. I was astounded 
by that statistic. It, it gave me goosebumps. <laughs> so every year I look back, I say we're less, we're less secure, but uh, I know you're working hard on that. So, so talk about how the bad guys, the threat has changed and evolved and how you've responded to that. You know, that's always been the case. We've always had intrusions where there's a certain brand of attackers that doesn't want to announce themselves, right? There's no upside in announcing that you've hacked somebody. So there's always been two types of attackers, right? One, ones that are very public, the ones that are very private and, and really have financial gain in mind. Over the last five years, the ones that are financially motivated have really started uh, being the dominant uh, force behind most of the illicit activity out there. What you see less frequently now are the big flashy attacks. I mean, for the first five years of our life, we were literally chasing worms around, right? I mean, there were there were deep penetrations during that time as well, but what made the news are were the big worms, which really you don't hear much about anymore, right? Because it's over, right? I mean, what's the fun in, in compromising half the internet and saying, hacked by Chinese, right? Who, who makes money from that? Nobody. So, but things, but things are happening much more clandestinely today. Uh, it takes more time and more effort to really analyze something. So notice how the security industry has changed in the last five years. Five years ago, it was all about automatically blocking everything that moves, and now people are going back and saying, we really got to slow down and think about this. We really got to analyze things better. We got to do much better analytics which is why technology that we're developing now is really around big data and how do we make take a ton of customer data. We have about two petabytes of customer logs to do. How do we turn that into security information that really, really means something? So yeah, I mean, historically, most of the investment that IT practitioners make is on keeping the bad guys out, uh, but we know that Absolutely. bad guys get in. And so you're saying that you're shifting your R&D emphasis and the industry will, I would presume, is shifting its spending on you gave an example of using analytics. So how is, talk about that a little bit more. How is big data playing a role in, in making us more secure? Sure. Well, if, if you think back to uh, the days when security information management products were, were a big ticket selling range, right? All of those products are built around traditional databases, or at least they, they were uh, in their first iterations. They really couldn't ingest all the logs out there, right? So that's the reason why Splunk is a very different company than Armor, than than uh, their ArcSight, for example. ArcSight literally just focused on security events. Splunk was focused on all machine data out there, right? But whereas whereas um, whereas ArcSight can tell you a lot about security, Splunk literally just gives you search and reporting functions. We're literally going to blend it to right? That's that's the next wave of of, of security information analytics. Uh, you got to be able to develop technology that can. Uh, go out there and, and look and do security uh, calls against a ton of customer data. That's the technology we've been building for the last five years. And we're keep so let me make sure I understand. You're saying ArcSight has that high fidelity in the security domain, but, few but, logs, but, right? but doesn't have the data. Right. Splunk has the data without the high fidelity. You're, you're bringing those two worlds together. How right. are you doing that? Right, so we, we spent a lot of time and money uh, building a backend that lets us scale to, the, to, those, to those heights. So we have two petabytes of log data. All of that log data is on spinning disk. All of it is accessible by a customer. So if a customer comes to us and says, I want to inspect data that happened five years ago, we do it just as fast as data that happened a year ago. Right? All of it happens in real time. Uh, we have a grid of, of, of systems that can do log processing and do correlation that does it in parallel, then reassembles the results and gives them to the user. So similar technologies that are used by Google uh, to do large scale search optimizations, we're applying those to security. Uh, and it's, there's not a lot of those examples right now, but you'll see them more and more. And you use, you use AWS as a, 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 a back-end infrastructure and you provide services to AWS customers, we, both we of those? Do, or? We do both. We, yeah. we host our own infrastructure, plus we use AWS to deliver uh, some of our security services. Right? So we have customers in pretty much every major cloud provider, uh, in about 25 of them. And a lot of times when you, when you go to any cloud environment, the question becomes, who can really secure me? Alert Logic is a company that can really deploy in multiple cloud providers. So, okay, so, so we do have deployments everywhere. So you're adding value on top of, I mean, Amazon says it's, it's its number one priority. You're adding value on top of that. I mean, the question is, why does Amazon need you? I mean, big company, you guys are a little company. What, what do you bring that Amazon can't do on its own? You know, what Amazon is really good at is making sure that their infrastructure services are secure. And I think they do a tremendous job at that. I mean, if you look at what Amazon has done for cloud security, they've made some really big advances in that. But when it comes down to uh, spinning up your cloud instance, right? So now you have your Linux VM running as a cloud instance. Who's going to secure that instance? That, become, that becomes the customer's job, right? They, have, they still have to do all the work that's involved in doing that. That's where we come in, right? There's, there's traditional toolkit of technologies out there. The security guys are used to buying. You just can't get those on Amazon because they're not built for Amazon, right? I mean, think about most security products out there today. That's the reason why at this uh, AWS show, you don't see a lot of traditional security, security vendors. Most of what they sell are appliances or traditional client server uh, products. They're not 
they're not elastic, they're not multi-tenant, they can't really scale with Amazon, so as a result, there's not a whole lot of options. Here. This is a really important point, Misha, that you're making. I mean, people sometimes forget that, that uh, you know, Amazon, like you said, takes care of the infrastructure, but the customer still has a lot of responsibility. Absolutely. Maybe not to do a lot of that non-differentiated heavy, list, heavy lifting, sure. but securing things like apps and, and so forth are you know, critical. Okay, so, um, so, so that's that's clear. Now you just wrote this. Uh, I don't know if you wrote it, but Alert Logic just put out this. Uh, I wrote a piece of it. Yeah. This uh, this. I don't know if you could see this. Uh, let's see. I'll hold it up here. Is that good? Yeah. So, no. So get it out of there. <laughs> yeah. All right. Here we go. Kind of bright. But so anyway, stop by the Alert Logic booth to get this. So take us through this. I mean, I read a piece of it last night and went through it. Essentially, you're making the case that the cloud is more secure. Than, than on premise. Is that, is that right or am I reading you know, too honestly, much into that? We're not trying to make any particular case. We, we, we think we have a unique vantage point because we're one of the few security companies out there that secures a lot of cloud environments and we have enterprise customers as well. It's easy for us to say, let's compare the two. Let's really see what, what attacks we're seeing and, and, and how they're impacting our customers. So we didn't go into trying to draw any particular conclusion. We thought it was an interesting, it was an interesting research project. Um, you know, from our just empirical perspective, we knew that you know most of our cloud deployments didn't seem that insecure, but the data was pretty startling, right? I mean, we do see more attacks on enterprises, and we do see them have much higher variance, right? There's obviously a larger expo exposed footprint. Uh, there's a, you could speculate a lot about why that is, but our findings really were that even though people are anxious about the cloud and they're worried about moving their applications to cloud environments because they're going to be less secure, the data doesn't support that. The data shows that, um, that, that cloud environments a lot of times are more secure. They certainly leave a much smaller attack footprint out there. And that's actually a big reason why cloud environments may be more secure, right? They're, it's easier to control it application by application as opposed to a large data center where everything lives. Right? Well, so, so the data that you shared essentially suggested that the the exposure within the cloud is, is, is less, the probability of a hit is less than it is on, on premise. Now, part of that could be, like you said, you could speculate, so I'm going to speculate. Part of that could be that the value of data on premise is higher, and, and as the more data gets into the cloud, that, that could shift, could it not? Absolutely, and I think the biggest difference is that whereas large data centers protect themselves by segmenting their networks and putting security appliances between each segment, that's not the way it works in most cloud environments. You know, the customer that we see at Amazon is usually, it's a line of business guy that has a business application that moves it to Amazon and figures out how to secure just that application, right? So as a result, all the, all the security policies are tailored to that application. They're, they're much tighter, uh, tighter controlled and, as, and the attack footprint is just much smaller, right? So whereas if it was living in a large data center, it would have kind of this blanket security policy that applies to all assets. In Amazon, it's literally app by app and it's much more tailored to it. That's the reason why they're, they're much more secure. So uh, be, because of the way cloud apps are constructed, I think they're inherently actually more, more, more secure just because we ma they're more manageable. Because right? an application and even a data view, right? <clears throat> You're protecting that app. Let me give you an example, right? Yeah. Patch management, right? Patch management is very painful for any enterprise. There's hundreds of millions of dollars being spent just on patching applications out there. That's not the way it works on Amazon, right? On Amazon, you literally uh, have a new, new, new VM, you test your patches, you reboot it to the new VM, and you shut down the old ones, right? You never go in and schedule patching times. You never sit there and wait for 30 days to figure out what can you patch and what can't you patch. You test your patches, you reboot it to the new environment, and you're done. That's a massive difference between what happens in enterprise. In enterprise, you can look at the vulnerability half-life. That's the law. That's how long it takes for a vulnerability to become, uh, you know, 50 percent less, uh, have 50 percent less exposure. It's a long time. That's the reason why most enterprises are more exposed. In the cloud, it's just much more. E it's just much easier to manage. Yeah, yeah, and, and and when you make a fix, you can you can apply it much much faster. That's uh, that's the that's real change that cloud computing brings. It is more it is more complicated in some regards because it changes the way you manage things, but at the same time, it opens up a world of possibilities. In terms what is, of Misha? What is your? I'm just going to pepper you with questions because when I get a security expert in here, it's fantastic. What about the notion of the network is the weakest link? So, I, I mean, I believe Amazon's network is very, you know, secure and, and solid, but at some point I got to bring data back into my own network, and I would think that is the weakest link in security, is it not? I, I certainly think that's one of, the, one of the areas where that needs more attention, right? And uh, um, the, the reason why networks are, are, are less secure is because they're difficult to wrap your arms around, right? At, at Amazon, that's one of the most 
complicated problems, right? Let's say you want to put an appliance in the Amazon environment. First of all, you can't just deploy appliances in Amazon because you can't just ship your hardware to them, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so, second, Amazon doesn't give you an easy way to look at network traffic. Somebody had to develop that. That's literally what we spent the last two years doing is developing a layer of technologies that let us do network introspection in cloud environments, right? So whereas that's available in enterprises, they use a totally different tool set, right? So the most advanced enterprises we're dealing with today are starting to pull back and say, you know, how are we going to get a visibility of all network threats across our on-premise and our cloud environments? And that's not trivial, right? We're helping first few customers do that, but that's something that, that, hasn't, that, that hasn't happened yet. So I'm, I'm dominated the conversation, and I apologize for that, Jeff. I don't know if you have any questions you want to jump That's in. That's all right, but, you're, you're but, going well. I, I, I was just going to say, but you just bring up an interesting point in kind of the blended environment, and, and how does the blended environment impact, you know, different avenues through the data center into the cloud, or which yeah. is what you're saying is probably more likely than from the cloud back through the data center. You know, the, the biggest gap that we see right now is that Enterprise IT doesn't seem to be involved in a whole lot of uh, security decisions, right? Because application owners take it upon themselves to move their applications to the cloud. A lot of times IT guys are the last people to know, right? That they literally find out long after it's done and by that point they, they're sitting there scratching their heads going, I don't know how to integrate this into my security toolkit, right? So right. Uh, it's a big challenge for IT. We're finally starting to see those renegade applications that we help. I mean, we, we secure a lot of renegade applications out there, right? I mean, we'll do a $50 million run rate by the end of the year. All of that is cloud deployments, right? So, so that's, there's a lot of cloud apps out there. Relatively few of them IT, IT guys actually know about, right? So we're right. finally starting to get calls in saying, I need help figuring out what these cloud deployments are doing and can you help me kind of build a single, single pane of glass across those cloud deployments and my on-premise IT solutions, right? right? We're at the very beginning of getting that figured out. That's a, that's a very early question. I asked, um, I asked Pat Gelsinger, it must have been two years ago now, Pat Gelsinger, of course, the, v, the C, CEO of VMware now, then he was at EMC, and I asked him, is, is security a do-over because of cloud? And he thought about it and he said, yeah. It is, and, and I'm going to ask you the same question. Is security a do-over? When you think about the legacy sort of security approaches, is security a do-over because of cloud? I think there's a number of industries that cloud disrupts. I think people are underestimating how much it's going to disrupt the security industry. I think, I think security industry is going to be turned upside down. The more deployments, and look, we're it's still very early, right? When you look at, when you look at your server shipments, right? Only 10% of them go to provider of some sort. And they're not even all cloud providers. Some of them are just hosting providers. So very few deployments are still done in the cloud, but already we're starting to see that traditional security products don't work. When traditional vendors try to put themselves in the cloud environments, it doesn't quite work. They're going to have to be rebuilt from the ground, from the ground up. So I think it's going to be very, very big uh, uh, disruption. There. All right, Misha, we're getting the hook. Thanks very much for coming by. I appreciate you. Me. Rapid fire responses. It was uh, really a pleasure to I meet you. Fast, so. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> All right, everybody, keep Get it right there. In. We're live here at Moscone, yeah. uh, the AWS Summit. I'm Dave Vellante. He's Jeff Frick. Check out wikibon.org for all the research, free research, by the way. Check out siliconangle.com, the reference point for tech innovation. We're here in San Francisco. We'll be right back uh, with our next guest. Welcome to AWS Marketplace a new way to find and buy software that runs in the Amazon Web Services cloud. Finding the right software today can be time consuming and expensive. Where to look, who to trust, software as a service, server software,